I've been really excited to put this video together for you because whilst there's endless variations of patterns and rhythms that we can use in music, I'm gonna give you five backbone rhythms that you can try and that you can use as a good starting point to learn. I'm gonna show you some slightly stripped back versions of each one and then build you up to playing some slightly more involved versions. And there's lots of tips and stuff along the way to really kind of teach you how piano is used in this way. And there's kind of a progressive build up throughout the video to introducing new ideas along the way. Playing chord patterns is a really helpful and fun and musical way to start practicing some of those essential rhythm skills and really get into grips with your hand coordination and interaction between your hands. It's beneficial whatever music you wanna play, but particularly with accompaniments and for things like playing in a band, writing music. So there's five main patterns and there's also a couple of extra things at the end, so don't miss that. And let me know in the comments how you get on with each one. I'm gonna show you each one on the same simple three chord progression, but to start with, you can practice the pattern on just one chord at a time to get used to it. Then to change chords, all we do is apply the same pattern between our hands to the new chord position when we change. These are the three positions I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use a B flat major chord, we're just going to play the root note in the left hand and then each note of the chord in the right hand. This is a second inversion shape, F, B flat and D. Then we're going to move to an F, F major. So the root in the left hand again and then just a root position shape, F, A and C in the right hand. And then the third chord which we're going to do two bars of is a C major. So the root in the left hand and then a first inversion position in the right, E, G, C. The first real warm up is playing each one of those and holding it for one bar. The majority of popular songs are in what we call 4-4 four, four time and that's what we're going to focus on for this video. All that means is that there's four beats in a bar, we're going to feel the rhythm, the time in groupings of four and we're going to count on each chord like this. Each chord is going to start on beat number one. One two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then you loop it round back to the B flat. So it's B flat, F, and then two bars of the C chord. Just holding chords for a bar like that is actually a way we would play, perhaps in a karma section of a ballad or something. And also in a band when other instruments are playing more rhythmic parts underneath, a lot of the time keys players can just hold chords over the top. These are whole notes or semi briefs so that's holding each chord for four counts. Now we're gonna add a little more rhythm to propel it along to the next chord by hitting the right hand on beat four and we can add a little bit of groove in the left hand as well. This is what we're gonna build up to. Forget the extra kind of groove notes in your left hand, we're gonna add those back in a second. So now we need to really be aware of this grid of four beats or quarter notes if you're a reader and we really need to start thinking about where on that grid each hand is going to play something so it's going to be hands together on beat one the bass note and the chord one two three and then it's just going to be the chord so just the right hand on the beat four so one two three four like that and then we repeat that on each chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. I recommend trying to count that as you play and keep that counting as even as you can. Then to add a bit more groove, we can add some left hand notes in between those beats. So to count in between the beats as well, we're gonna say this, one and two and three and four and one. And all I'm doing is putting an and exactly halfway in between the beat. And now that's our new grid where we can kind of pinpoint where each hand is gonna play something. That's eighth notes if you're a reader or quavers as we also say. 
We're gonna add a little bit more rhythm by bouncing off the left hand root note either side of the beat four. So either side of that chord hit in the right hand, like this. One and two and three and four and. So it's the and after three and then the and after four as well. And, four, and, like that. Keep your wrist nice and loose so you can play kind of percussively. Practice that on one chord and then you can practice changing chords as well. So it'll sound like this. One, and, two, and, three. And, four, and. One, and, two, and, three. And, four, and. One, and, two, and, three. And, four, and. One, and, two, and, three. And, four, and, one. Remember, my hands are doing the same thing on each new position. And the cool thing is we can kind of vary that and give it a bit more feel by sometimes leaving some of those ands out or sometimes not doing them at all. So we could just use the and before the four or maybe just use the and after the four to give it a bit of variety. And you can decide on that using your ears and what sounds best for the music you're playing. So you could just go one and two and three and four and one, leave out the last and. Or you could also go one and two and three and four and one just put an and in between the four and the next one and you can play around with that and have some variety between chords. The second rhythm is really a staple piano pattern and now we're really going to add a sense of momentum and energy to playing these chords. It's almost like when the drummer might kick in so we can kind of be the band on the piano which is why the instrument's so cool. This is what it's going to sound like. And again, we're gonna build up to that. So the right hand is just gonna be playing quarter notes. That just means it's gonna play, play this chord on every count. One, two, three, four. So practice that first. You can just do the right hand first as well, but I'll show you with the left hand too. One, two, three, four, change. One, two, three, four, change. One, two, three. hands together on beat one and then just the right hand for two, three and four. And as you might have noticed, I'm making this sound a little bit fuller by using the sustain pedal on each chord. Obviously, I'm just changing the pedal between chords. Once you've got comfortable with that, we're going to give it an eighth note feel by basically playing something on every one and two and three and four and every one of those divisions. So the left hand is basically going to bounce on every and in between the right hand. The hands are gonna to play together on beat one to really give it some oomph to emphasize beat one. And then the left hand's gonna bounce on the ands. So one and two and three and four and. And then when you change, whenever you change a chord, most of the time you wanna play hands together again to again give it emphasis. One and two and three and four and one and two and I think you get the idea we're just going to do the same pattern again on each position remember to keep your wrists loose so they're kind of constantly moving like this to get used to that you can even practice this away from the piano by tapping on your knees together left right left right left right left together and just to give you another idea of the way we might play this, we quite often use octaves or roots and fifths of whichever chord you're on at the time in our left hand. And that extra note in the left hand can help make things sound bigger and kind of give you more options for patterns between your hands. So if we were gonna do that, so I'm just gonna hit the low one, deeper sound for this on one, one, and then I'll do the ands in my thumb, my pivoting like this, one and, two and three and four and and then I could go down to the F's and do the same thing if I decide that's too too deep a sound for whatever I'm playing I might use the um, 
the root and the fifth of the F chord, which would be C. You know, it's, I could bounce on the fifth as well. One and two and three and four and. And then for the C, maybe I'll go back to octaves. One and two and three and four and. This pattern gets used all the time. A great example would be Hey Jude. Hey Jude. So it's important to point out that whilst a song may have a basis in a particular pattern, there's often going to be a little bit of variety and moments throughout specific to that song where it does something different. Just quickly, if this video has been helpful so far, then please click the like button because that's really helpful for the channel. Rhythm 3 is almost kind of backwards from the previous one, so now we're going to be playing the right hand chords on the ands in between the B, which creates a much more bouncy feel, but it's kind of easy to play as you just go back and forth between your hands, left, right, left, right, etc. So we're accenting the rhythm in between the B on the ands, and it's going to sound like this. One and two and three and four and 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 one and this one's probably kind of easier to play we literally just play the left hand notes on the beat and then the right hand chord on the ands and you can practice this like all of them as slow as you need to start um, for now you can create a kind of more flowing feel with it by holding the pedal down one and two and three to let your wrists constantly be moving like that and then you just change and do it on whichever chord you're going to next one and two and three and four and change great example of this is the bruno mars song count on me So for that last bit, there's a couple of chords that only lasted two beats. So in that kind of situation, you would just change more often. One and two and three and four and one. So what we're doing in the right hand on the and, we would call playing on the off beat. And of course, you can still do other things in the left hand whilst doing that to create slightly different rhythms. And a good example of that would be Oh Bloody by the Beatles. And there the left hand just breaks up the notes of the chord. There's a slightly different pattern there because it's right, left, right, together. Right, left, right, together. But the right hand is still on the offbeat on those ands and that is also the basis for some kinds of reggae and ska as well. There's a lot more to playing that though. I want to cover that on the channel in future properly though. Okay, at this point I want to mention that once you've started getting comfortable with this, you can count along slowly and you've started to build it up a bit to really get it tight and to make sure that you're playing really rhythmically accurately, it's well worth practicing this to a metronome. If you've not used one before, it's well worth doing. I'm going to do a video on how to start getting used to it very soon, but there's loads of free apps you can get available. I always used to use this uh, Metro Timer app, which is good. Um, but recently I started using this vibrating one, which is also a smartwatch, which is really handy. You just have to tap it to start and stop and you can change all the settings and stuff on the watch. It's really cool. There's a link and a discount code in the description if you want to check that out. For the fourth rhythm, we're going to look at a slightly different way of playing where we mostly break up the notes in the right hand. Now there's endless amounts of patterns that you could play when you do something like this, but most of the time it's based around the notes in the chord that you're on at the time. You can add extra embellishments and other color notes in as well, but we're gonna look at chord tone. So we're gonna play this. So for a bit of variety, I've gone up slightly higher on the piano for this so you can kind of get used to how you can create different sorts of textures in different ranges. Now I actually did a few different things there. So I'm gonna show you a couple of slightly different ways you can do this, but it's essentially based on those even eighth notes again, playing, on, playing something on every one and two and three and four and. 
I'll show you a few slightly different ways of doing this and you can practice each one separately, but then you've got a small vocabulary of things that you can improvise with. This is kind of a way we improvise. We, we kind of mix and match parts of vocabulary that we're familiar with and you can add some variety and some feel to your playing. For the first one, we're just gonna do the top two notes together on beat one, one, and then we're gonna thumb the and, and, and then go back to the right hand for two, two, and, three, and, four, and. So it's the top two notes with the left hand on beat one, and then the rest of it just goes back and forth between the right hand. And then we do the same thing on the next chord position. Top two, bouncing to the bottom one. And then the next chord position together on beat one, bouncing off the thumb on the ands. So first practice that, then we're gonna do it a slightly different way and then you can mix them up. The next way, instead of hitting the top two together, we're just gonna hit the top one and then you can do this to create a slightly thinner texture or perhaps bring out the top note more prominently. Okay, so all we do is, we're still gonna to go together on beat one with the left hand, but the right hand's gonna go the top one, the bottom one, the middle one, the bottom one. Top one, the bottom one, the middle one, the bottom one, like that. So that would be one and two and three and then repeat the same thing on the next chord. One, and two, and three, and four, and just repeat this for whatever position you end up in. So sped up. And then another bit of variety would be halfway through this time use the left hand note on beat three, like this. One, and two, and three. So I've replaced three being up there again with down here. Let me do that again. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. That's another way of doing it, and I think that works nicely when you end up playing two bars on the same chord. So far, we've just been using three note chord voicings in our right hand. That's easier to get used to, but just so you know, you can do this kind of stuff when you play four note voicings, which we use sometimes as well, where one of the notes gets doubled. So you could play something like this. Okay, the final rhythm then is gonna sound a little bit more challenging and it is definitely a little bit more involved, but you can do it if you follow along and build up slowly step by step like I'm going to show you. This is what it's gonna sound like. Remember, we can do it slower afterwards though. So we're still keeping that eighth note grid. We're playing something on every one and two and three and four and. It's always useful to have something even to work against. Now once you get comfortable with patterns like this and learn a few of them, then there's no end to the amount of patterns and fun you can have playing. Over on Patreon, I'm gonna go over a few other things for supporters over there, and if you sign up at any tier, you can watch that video. Gonna give you a couple of extra patterns to try, look at some specific song examples, some Rolling Stones, some Coldplay, some Elton John, and see what kind of things they're doing. And next year, I'm gonna start a song analysis series as well, which will be really helpful. There's a link for that below if you do wanna check it out. Anyway, back to this pattern. So we are gonna, in a minute, use two notes in the left hand now. Um, if you can't reach octaves, don't worry because we're breaking these up so you can move from one to the other. But this next pattern is more involved, so we're gonna learn one beat at a time, which will help you build up to playing the whole thing. So beat one, the one and the and after one, we're gonna do like this. One and. So I'm using octaves now, so I'm doubling the B flat in the left hand. And on beat one, I'm gonna play the deep one, the low one with the chord, and then I'm gonna use the upper one 
for the and. So thinner sound. One and. So that bit's quite straightforward. Now let's add on beat two. So two and then the and after two. This time we're going to use the thumb in the right hand. So the lowest note in your whatever chord position you've got in the right hand. In this case it's F on beat two. And then we're going to come up and then hit the whole chord on the and after two. Remember that's one of our accent beats. So we've got one and two and. Okay, so after that first chord hit, feel it rippling from bottom to top. One and two, whole chord and. One and two and. Practice just that bit first. Keep the pedal down so it sounds nice and fluid. Then beat three, we're gonna jump back to our left thumb and then our right thumb. So the thumbs are gonna go one after the other. Okay. Like this. One and two and three and. Do that again. One and two and three. When you can do that, then add on beat four. Don't add on beat four until you can do that bit comfortably. On beat four, we want to accent the, the beat again. So we're going to play the whole chord. And then we're going to do an and in our left thumb afterwards. We're just going to practice this just on one chord for now. I really recommend doing that for this one because it's more complicated. Okay, so all together, it's going to be like this. One and two and three and four and do it again so together ripples up thumb whole chord then climbs up from here whole chord and then just does one more thumb in the left hand for the final and and then when you've got that you can practice doing it on the next chord position for the next chord f i recommend trying to do this with a f and a c so even though that's a, the fifth, not the root, you can still use it as this kind of groove ending note. <laughs> okay, so same pattern. Remember, always feel the pattern between your hands. Don't worry about what the notes are. Once you're in position, feel the same motion between your hands. One and two and three and four and. You can do exactly the same thing. C in this position, the same thing between your fingers. One and two and three and four and. Doing that slowly at first and then start trying to develop a bit of a flow with it because sometimes you might find it's actually easier to loop it around once you get a bit of flow going. You kind of end up doing it a bit more automatically and you stop overthinking exactly where which hand goes. But all, all the while, try and bear in mind where those accents are. Just as an extra quick bonus, sometimes we play constant eighth notes in our right hand. A really great example of that would be Mr. Blue Sky. It actually does it in the left hand there as well, like this. Here's one extra bonus tip. Sometimes we change chord just before beat one on the and before. And we might call this an anticipation or a, a pushed chord. This is a really cool sound. So it might happen like every other chord, for example. So I could play one and two and three and four and 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 one. I hope that was helpful. Next, you should watch this video, which is an exercise to help you lift up and move positions much more fluidly. That's gonna help you play loads of things at the piano much easier. Thanks for watching.